What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. It is a hot one today. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm already sweating through this shirt. I've got Aiden who's gonna be helping me today because I wanna get this done so we don't melt. Plus, we got rain coming in the forecast. So I wanna get this done before we get rain and melt. Uh, but today is tomato tie-up day. Now, a lot of you have been asking me, Luke, why aren't you tying up your tomatoes this year? They look terrible. And I agree, they do look terrible. And it's because we were waiting to actually be able to buy these. Now we use furring strips here on the channel. We use a process, or we do a process called single stemming. And that means we uh, take a single stake and we grow the tomatoes up the stake, basically picking one main growth stem to grow all the way up. When we do that, it allows way more airflow to come in. It actually helps fruit to ripen better, helps fruit to ripen faster. It reduces pest disease uh, or pest uh, pressure and disease, things like blights and uh, damping off and whatnot. It's just all eliminated through, uh, through single stemming. It's such a great way to grow. And typically, uh, if we did nothing at all, I mean, they'd grow like a big bushy mound mess. What would happen is probably by like, late August, early September, they would already show signs of blight. They would already be dying off. The fruit inside would hardly be ripe. We just really would have very poor results. Pest pressure would come in. We'd have a lot of stress on the plants. Um, you know, we would have uh, things like tomato hornworm coming in, honing in on that stress. Aphids would typically come in. It just was a mess. And over the years, we really decided that Single stemming was our method. Now we've done methods before on how to Florida weave your tomatoes. You know, we've got videos on that. We've done videos on traditional staking and how to make traditional stakes, uh, you know, cages. So you can use that method if that works for you. But I know for us here in Michigan, our climate just really, it just does so much better with single stemming and uh, you know, single staking your tomatoes. It allows us to grow way more plants in a, in a given space as well, because we're only growing basically one main leader, one main growth point all the way up rather than letting it bush and go crazy. So it saves on space, saves on disease, prevents pests. Um, it's just so much better. So with that being said, uh, why did we wait this long? Well, it's because lumber prices were so expensive. Uh, these are typically a buck 90 at our local hardware store, but they were actually closer to $7 uh, at its peak. Now I couldn't wait for the prices to drop all the way down to that, to that level, but I also didn't want to spend a couple hundred dollars on literally furring strips. So uh, what I did was uh, I actually went to them and I offered to buy what's called seconds. Now seconds are not so pretty pieces. Um, this one here basically broke. Uh, it basically is missing about a foot of uh, a foot off the bottom because um, it was eight feet and now it's like six and a half, seven feet. And that's because it snapped. Well, they can't sell it as an eight foot furring strip. So they just pile it up and they sell them as seconds. The really nice thing is I got those for $3.50. So saved well over 50%, about 75% savings by going with seconds. Now granted, they're not pretty. <laughs> a lot of them are bent. A lot of them are curved. A lot of them are broke. So you're gonna get some nasty stuff, but I was able to save a ton of money by doing that. And it actually allowed us to get the, the furring strips that we need to stake up our tomatoes. So like I said, I got another one here that you'll see, you know, it's really jagged. I mean, we're talking like tons of jagged stuff, really uneven, just not so great stuff. But again, are the tomatoes gonna care? No, the tomatoes aren't gonna care. In fact, the tomatoes are probably gonna appreciate it because they've been basically growing like this for uh, two months now. So let's go, let's get them staked up. And then we're gonna use a product called Fantastic Elastic. We actually sell it over at migardener.com. I would highly recommend checking it out. You'll see why I love it so much. This is Fantastic Elastic. Now, Fantastic Elastic I love because uh, if you ever use tomato tape before, the green stretchy stuff, what happens is it gets uh, baked in the sun and it can snap. It also uh, stretches to the point where it loses its elasticity and it just becomes hard. And so you really, uh, what happens is the tomato as it grows can actually choke off the stem and actually girdle it. It, it can actually uh, restrict the growth and choke it off. The really nice thing about Fantastic Elastic is we work, we're actually working with a company uh, to produce a elastic band that is UV resistant, does not fade, won't weather, won't crack. It holds its elasticity. It's a special polymer blend of nylon and uh, nylon and elastic, um, I believe. And 
they, uh, they basically produce this for us, 100, uh, 100 yard rolls, and we've been selling it, we've been using it for the past three years, and it's absolutely incredible because it does not choke the plants, it allows the plants to sway in the breeze, it allows the plants to, what well, it holds them up, so it holds the weight, um, but it, it lasts all season. So none of those problems uh, exist like you have with some of the green stretchy tie-up tape and whatnot. But this is just what we use. If you like it, check it out. If not, keep using the green stretchy tie-up tape, keep using you know, cut nylons, but hey, just another option for you. So let's go. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take these stakes and typically what I'll do is I will come in with a, a saw and I'll cut off a 45 degree angle, but because a lot of these are broke and jagged and they're all kind of different sizes, um, I'm not gonna sacrifice any more length because like that one piece I showed you, if I cut off you know uh, six or seven inches to make a 45 degree angle to pound it into the ground, I'm gonna lose like six or seven more inches and it's only gonna be like five feet tall. So uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna stick them in blunt and basically just push them down. We've had a lot of rain, so the soil should be damp enough to, to really, well, soft enough and damp enough to just accept the, the post. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be careful not to, uh, not to stick it right next to the plant. I'm gonna leave about two to four inches away from the base of the plant because these plants are so large and so mature. I don't wanna you know, damage any roots going down. So I'm gonna come out about three to four inches, um, stick the stake down, and then we'll basically just tie it up up the way. Um, so the first thing to do is gonna be to isolate each individual plant because it's a mess. Um, so what we're gonna do is just kind of come in here and find the plants. Like I said, it's chaos. Um, we might break a couple stems, but that's okay. As long as we don't break the main growth stem, as long as we can find that, we're gonna be fine. But as you can see here, Aiden, you can kind of tell if you pull this up slowly, it's got a lot of growth going everywhere. But what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna find the place with the most flowers and has the most uh, upright growth because it's kind of forked over the, over the months. So uh, this is right here is the main growth stem. I can tell this is the tallest point on the plant. So we're gonna get, uh, we need our pruners, which are right over here. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna prune off all this, all this excess growth. It's gonna look really bad for about <laughs> two or three weeks until all this stuff heals because it's been so neglected. But we're gonna come in here and it's gonna look, oh, I mean, it might actually look really good once it's cleaned up too, because it's kind of a mess. So all we're gonna do is just kind of come in here, clean all this stuff up here. And what we're essentially doing, Aiden, is we're, uh, we're prioritizing one main growth point to fruit and flower. It's gonna conserve a lot of energy. So it's actually gonna end up putting out more flowers. It's gonna be healthier in the long run. Instead of them like competing. Yeah, exactly, instead of, instead of them competing. Because tomatoes, they're a vine, and so they produce what's called suckers. These are suckers here. And suckers are like whole new plants. Those whole new plants will fruit and flower if you let them, but they get so big and, and congested that they end up blocking out sunlight, they end up blocking airflow, and um, it just really makes things a mess. So, okay, so now, now that we've got this kind of isolated, we're gonna come in here. I like to come in behind the plant about three or four inches from the base. And then if you wanna hold this plant here, we'll take it and stick it in. And it's going in nicely. It's not meeting too much resistance. Oopsie, <laughs> I don't wanna to, to press too hard because it is kind of wobbly right there, but we're just gonna give it a good press. And then all we're going to do is just tie it up. So now Aiden, all we do is we just come and we pull this uh, fantastic elastic out about four to six inches or so. And then we come in here and we attach it to the stake. Now, the best thing to do is to bring the plant right along, basically right along this stake here. See how it kind of like rests flat like that? And that way, here, hold it up at the top there and then we're gonna tie it to the top or tie it to the stake. And we'll probably have to tie it two or three times per plant to get to the top. All right, Aiden, so uh, now that we've gotten this all staked up here, we, we won't have to touch this for about another week or so um, because this is pretty much as high as we need to stake it up right now. 
But a lot of people ask, how much foliage do we take off the bottom? It's really good to get that to get the leaves off the soil because the soil is where things like blight occur. So we're gonna prune them up about a foot to a foot and a half off the soil level. So they're gonna look a little naked down below, but the nice thing is that they're gonna have lots of airflow. Yeah, this already looks way better. Yeah, it's gonna look so much better when they're all done. But like I said, I did about a foot and a half from the soil level, and that way there's nothing blocking airflow, and then we'll leave everything up higher. All right, so in an effort to not melt, we're gonna hurry up and get this project finished. And uh, also we're kind of racing some rain that's coming. So uh, we're gonna hurry up, I'm gonna turn the camera off and uh, let it cool down as well, cause it's like 90 degrees out. And uh, we're gonna hurry up, finish this project up, but I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's all done. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to use the Fantastic Elastic here. Like I said, you can use anything you want, but um, basically we're just going to pull out about ah, four to six inches or so tip the tomato plant up and then balance it on your head so it doesn't fall over. And then all I'm going to do is just take the string, stretch it around and loosely tie it. I want there to be some, some uh, forgiveness because the tomato plant is gonna grow and also with wind, I want it to be able to sway. So we've got another piece here. And we're just gonna keep it going up the stake and as you can see it's just so easy to work with because it's uh, it's really thin so it's not like it's bulky material doesn't get in the way it also does not choke the the tomato stem because like I said it's got that forgiveness which is really nice and then it also does not uh, it also does not age in the Sun you can leave it out all season long and it's still stretchy at the end of the season which is awesome so that's why I love this stuff so much. It's been a it's been a game changer in our garden. So there we go. So we'll do one more, maybe two more, and we should be good. But as you can see, it's just so fast to do it this way. And that's why, another reason why I love it is because when I've got 20 to 40 tomato plants to tie up, I don't wanna be doing this for three or four hours. We go it's easy as that we'll come in here just make basically make sure this plant just keeps growing up the stake but four tie points is plenty enough for a plant of this size and then what's really nice is because we've tied it underneath these leaf joints here you can see it's got basically as this leaf matures it's going to hold that weight and it's basically going to kind of lock itself to the pole so it's not really going to go anywhere it's not going to slide which is nice all right so there we go all wrapped up and i've got to say it looks great Check it out. I mean, it looks so much cleaner, so much tidier. And yeah, you know, it's a lot of work, a lot more than I was really wanting to put in uh, into this tomato bed, but it was the work that it took to get it to where it needed to be. So, uh, I mean, typically had I had the wood, I would have trellised them from the very beginning. It wouldn't have been this huge mess. I wouldn't have broken so much, uh, so many uh, tomatoes off. You know, it's kind of just, it is what it is. So uh, we are back to where I'd like to be. This is definitely gonna be so much better. And um, I just appreciate you guys tuning in for today's episode. So thank you guys so much. A special big thank you to Aiden for helping out. And um, yeah, you know, if you're really interested in single stemming, you think this method is gonna be for you, make sure to check out all of our other videos on single stemming and, uh, and staking up tomatoes this way. We have lots of how-tos, lots of tutorials on how to properly prune, how to properly stake, all those uh, videos you can find on our channel. It's just, it's too hot to think today. So I just, uh, I need to get this done. I thought I'll just bring you guys along, but I am covered head to toe in sweat. So I gotta go get a shower. I'll catch you guys on the next episode. Remember to grow bigger, go home. See ya, bye. <laughs>